Oh goody, we're back to making up death facts for views again. Oh joy. She said corpses can get goosebumps at the funeral because the hair follicles are still working after death. Ma'am, no. No, not unless the funeral is happening 10 minutes after death and the body is in a walk-in freezer. Okay, so here's the actual science. Goosebumps, or piloerection, if you want to impress somebody at a party, happen when tiny muscles in your skin respond to adrenaline. That's a living body thing. Once the heart stops and the nerves go quiet, that show is over. Now, could there be a twitch or two right after death? Sure. I've seen it, sure. But by the time a body is either embalmed, casketed, and you're showing up with a casserole for the repast, no goosebumps. Also, embalming dehydrates the skin. Goosebumps need living tissue and active circulation. You know what embalming fluid doesn't do? Chill you into a state of emotional response. So, unless your funeral director embalmed the body with Red Bull and regret, there will be no goosebumps, just vibes, and maybe a little waxy buildup. Let's stop pretending TikTok trivia is a mortuary license. These are getting out of hand. If grandma is up in the casket and she's getting goosebumps, she's alive. She is not dead. She's not with Jesus, not yet. Call 911, please. Ah, yes. Another day, another TikTok horror story. Apparently corpses are now doing sit-ups mid-cremation like they're trying to win a CrossFit challenge. Uh, let's set the crematory record straight, shall we? No. Bodies don't sit up during cremation. The temperature inside a cremation retort hits 1400 to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. At that point, muscle tissue isn't flexing. It's cooking. We're not getting Pilates. We're getting cremation. Cremation. Now, do bodies sometimes twitch a little from the heat or air movement when things first get going? Yeah, that part's not total fiction. Between the intense air pressure, the roaring flame, and the fact that this is a literal oven, you might see a little flinch or a spasm. And between us girls, yeah, I've cracked that crematory door before for science, and I've seen the little twitches. But sit up? No. That would require coordinated muscle groups, leverage, and you know, muscles still attached. And side note, most cremation retorts don't have windows. This isn't hell's peephole. Once the door closes, it locks. You can't just pop it open on a lot of these machines. The older ones, technically, you can reopen them, but why would I? On a normal day, why would I? And in training in the new hire, I would not do that. I'm not trying to singe off my eyebrows for a peek at Uncle Gary mid-roast. We don't stand around watching the whole thing like it's a campfire ghost story. That's not how any of this works. Cremation is a tightly controlled, highly regulated process handed by licensed professionals. Or at least overseen by the licensed people. If a retort operator saw a body do a full-on undertaker rise, they wouldn't scream and quit. They'd call the manufacturer and say, hey, I think my retort is possessed. Because yeah, look, I get it. Death is mysterious and the unknown can be scary, but spreading exaggerated horror stories just makes it harder for families to trust us. I've had people come in genuinely afraid their loved one is going to move during cremation because they saw something wild on TikTok, and that's not okay. So if you want to talk facts about death, stick with people who actually do this work. Truth is already strange and fascinating, and you don't have to make it haunted. Unless you want to talk about haunted funeral homes, that I got stories for. Who told you that? Because no, we don't have firefighters on standby every time we cremate someone who's morbidly obese. Uh... That's not a thing. I mean, I have called the fire department before, but it was for a lift assist, like... If I'm seriously struggling to get someone from my minivan to the prep room or into the crematory safely, not because I'm worried about a grease fire. And listen, I love a good piece of eye candy as much as the next girl, especially if they're a big burly firefighter, but they're not just hanging around while I cremate people. They only show up when I really need them. The only time they come uninvited 
is when someone driving by sees black smoke coming from the funeral home, calls 911 because they think the funeral home is on fire. Totally fair. But it's, it's not a fire. It's just what happens when you cremate a human body, especially one with a higher fat content. That burns hot and fast, and yeah, it can create smoke if you're not monitoring it correctly. The crematory isn't a backyard grill. We know how to handle the heat, so no, we don't summon the local firehouse every time we turn on the machine. But thank you for that mental image. 